If you were training to dive in 1943, this was the equipment you were using. He has only his common sense, his technical knowledge, and his diver's dress to help him. This Navy training video shows the classic dive helmet, heavy boots, and thick suit. The total weight of the gear is 190 pounds. You'd think vintage scenes like this have long since disappeared. But if you look closely, underneath the waters of New Hampshire, you can still find creatures from the deep, straight from a Jules Verne novel. Granite Lake has a monster, and the monster's name is Granny. It seems every lake in New Hampshire has a legendary creature. At Granite Lake in Nelson, it's Granny. And Granny usually lives out by the island. And when you see waves and you don't, we saw some earlier, and there was no boat. We suspect that it's Granny. But what's making waves in the lake this day Another unusual sight on the lake bottom. Turns out that same dive gear from the 1940s is still used today, thanks to this guy. Is it safe to do this? It's perfectly safe, yes, yes, yeah. Even though this is technology that's 100 years old? That's why it's still being used today. This is Rob Love, a transplant from England, who is keeping the tradition of vintage diving alive. Being down here is family tradition. My father got me into it way back when, and uh, I've been doing it ever since. I think I've spent probably more time underwater than I have on top of the water. <laughs> Rob's day job is a commercial diver for his company, Dive Task LLC. Using modern dive equipment, he's busy salvaging sunken boats or repairing underwater utilities on the seacoast. But several years ago, he started doing vintage diving in his free time. It's a copper helmet. It's a canvas suit, which is sealed. You have a pair of, uh, this is the British version, you have a pair of lead boots and a lead chest weight. And uh, you're sealed in that, and there's two guys on a hand pump on the surface that are cranking that. And then you just go down, you go to work. To make it work, you need easy-to-access water entries around New Hampshire, like Granite Lake, and a support team, including his wife, Debbie. I said, you're crazy. <laughs> it's, usually the, it's usually the first response I get. Um, and then that, that's pretty cool, but I would never do it. It's usually the second response I get. Okay. And? Yep. It takes the team about 20 minutes to get each diver suited up with 18-pound boots, a massive weight belt, and a metal shoulder frame. This is the hard part, getting the, uh, the breastplate sealed. The helmet is eventually twisted on and the air hose attached. Are you ready? Dive is ready. When well, you give it two taps on the helmet. Forget swimming here. With this stuff, you simply walk into the abyss. Air is pumped from a compressor into the entire suit, allowing Debbie to breathe. And a small relief valve keeps it from over-inflating. It can happen. I refer you to the training film. Pressure above two pounds would cause the diver's suit to blow up like a balloon. It would be impossible for him with his stiff arms to reach his hand wheel, and he might be blown to the surface. By the time Debbie walked out of the water, a crowd had gathered to watch this unusual sight. While this may look just like it did 80 years ago, most of the gear she's wearing is actually new. Yeah, people kind of think it's, it's, you know, it's an old helmet. It's probably 100 years old when it's actually not. It was only, it's actually four years old. It was built four years ago by Morse Diving in Boston. 
Not only do they still make vintage dive helmets, you can also buy vintage suits with modern materials. But the brass and copper fittings are essentially the same. So is walking around in nearly 200 pounds of equipment. I first put it on, I thought, wow, this is really heavy. And then I thought, how am I gonna get to the water? And once I was in the water, I'm like, it was amazing to me how 200 pounds can be light as a feather once you're in. To find out for myself, the team suited me up next, just like they used to. Feeling kind of like an astronaut, I made those first heavy strides into the lake water. Unlike scuba diving, you don't float, you simply walk on the bottom. Do you have a lot of good sized rocks over there? That's some decent boulders out here. The attached air hose also has a radio line, allowing me to talk to the surface. Now, does anyone ever get tangled up in the hose? No, we have two people back here guiding the hose, keeping it at the right length. After a short time on the lake bottom, my Jules Vernian trip was over, and I took a breath of fresh air. Wow. Okay. It's amazing how much heavier it is once you get oh, out. Yeah, yeah. And once you're in the water, you're as light as a feather, right? Rob hopes someday his day job will require using this vintage gear. For now, he's hoping others will want to go for a walk too, 20,000 leagues under the sea. We're always looking for people that want to come along and try it out and, and help out with it. And anybody else that has this equipment, you know, they can, they're more than welcome to give us a call and we can go dive it.